Welcome to Sports Beat KC, the Kansas City Stars Daily Sports Podcast. It's Friday, August 7th. I'm Blair Kirkhoff. The Royals emphatically put an end to their six game losing streak on Thursday with a 13 2 victory over the Chicago Cubs. Everything seemed to go right for the Royals. It's about time something did. Beat writer Lynn Worthy discusses the week for the Royals. We hit on the encouraging notes like the young starting pitching, and we spend some time talking about the energetic young outfielder Nick Heath a local product who made his first Major League start on Thursday. After a break, you'll hear from the happy, maybe even relieved, Royals manager Mike Matheny, and stick around to hear from Nick Heath, who wore a big smile throughout his post-game meeting with reporters. So here we go, talking Royals with Lynn Worthy. Okay, Lynn, I said to myself uh, last weekend that we'll catch up with the Royals after they win a game, and so... Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday came. Uh, here we are on Friday, and yes, the Royals have won a game, uh, defeating the Chicago Cubs on Thursday night to end the six-game losing streak, and they busted out, did it in pretty impressive fashion, all um, all up and down the lineup and, and pitching as well. So, I don't know, um, an aberration, a sign of things to come. Where do you put I, – I know Mike Matheny was feeling good about uh, that game last night. Yeah, he was feeling good. I, I think he was feeling good just because of the way things had gone. I mean, you know, to see um, – the way he put it was like they, they were seeing things that they were encouraged by. They were seeing things that were heading in the right direction. They just weren't getting the results. So to, to get the results last night was – Definitely a, a lift for him just because I think you can see after uh, some of these games and some of these losses where um, it was getting to be a little disheartening. I mean, he wasn't, you know, down in the dumps, but it was, you know, it was it was hitting him because I think he, right. he's one of those guys who wants to win every game that they go out there. For sure. Look, and they um, they came into the season with, you know, with some promise and um, things didn't break their way early. You know, they, they came into last night's game with a three and 10 record and they, they take a four and 10 mark into the weekend series at home against the Minnesota twins, still one of the worst in baseball, but again, feeling better after the, the 13 to two victory on, uh, on Thursday night over the Cubs. Hey, let's start with um, starting pitching and the young starting pitching that, that has been a um, uh, maybe a little bit better than expected so far. The, the efforts of Brady Singer and Chris Bubich they have, um, you know, uh, I don't, we didn't expect either one of them in a normal year to have started the season with the Royals, but it's not a normal year, and they are now, you know, in the rotation and been pretty impressive uh, in, in, in all their starts so far. Yeah, I mean, Singer was the one that we, you know, we thought was the furthest ahead, so it wasn't um, that surprising, that, especially with the way their rotation was because, I mean, you remember at one point they were – um, you know, they'd come into spring training with four starters. And at one point earlier in the season, they had one. So, I mean, that was, yeah. <laughs> you know, something, yeah. something had to give there because you had Brad Keller and Jacob Junis started off um, on the IL as they were working their way back from COVID. Um, then Mike Montgomery made one start and uh, went on the IL with a, a lat strain. So that just left Danny Duffy. By that point, Singer was already in the rotation. But, I mean, so you had just a couple guys. So Bubich had to – get pressed into into duty and he's looked good I mean that that first start um you could just tell that the you know the guy who never pitched above a ball was feeling some some jitters even without fans in the stands to um be spraying the ball over the place and hit three guys I think you know, he hit the same guy twice and <laughs> I mean it yeah. was um I think that it to me that first start the first two innings was more so just him getting adjusted to the, the moment as opposed to how he's going to perform. And then the second start, he looked really good. I mean, the second start, you know, he picks uh, pitches six, gives up, I think it was six, give up two. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, they've, they've looked good. Um, talking to Dayton Moore last week, he, he had said that, um, you know, going into spring training originally, they had sort of thought, okay, on a regular year, that they might be looking to bring these guys up June, July, and let them start in a regular year, the regular year, meaning they would have had some time in the Myers. And then after the pandemic and the break and um, spring training 2.0, um, they really looked at it. And according to him, they, they, they didn't see a need to 
sort of alter that plan drastically, even though it wasn't a normal year. And then the opportunity obviously presented itself when you had need in the rotation with, you know, three guys going down. So here you have Singer and Bubich making the, their, their starts every fifth day. And now you finally have a five-man rotation again, which is for the first time all season that the Royals can say that. Yep. And uh, that, <clears throat> that five-man rotation now includes Brad Keller, who – um, not much older than Singer and Bubich, who are you know in their early twenties. Keller's twenty four, uh, Singer's twenty three, Bubich twenty two. I think I've got those ages right. I know Keller's a little bit older, and certainly a year ahead in in terms of experience, a um, couple years ahead in terms of experience. And he looked good last night with five shutout innings. I, through it, his pitch count was in the mid seventies, I think, when they uh, when they got him out. He had a big lead. It was just a very favorable conditions for him to pitch with the, the Royals jumping on the Cubs early and, and then building that lead. But even with that, I thought I thought Brad Keller looked really good and beyond what I expected for a guy who hadn't pitched this year. Yeah, I mean, for the fact that he hadn't pitched all season, for the fact that, you know, um, he had an, uh, a spring training that was interrupted like everybody else's, and then he had another spring training that was interrupted not like everybody else's by COVID. <laughs> and then he come, you know, then he's um, he's been doing the live batting practice, simulated games at the T-Bones ballpark and such. But um, for him to come out there in his first game of the season, um, you know, to, to throw um, – was it, uh, to get through um, five complete, 75, uh, strikeout seven, slider looked really good. He was talking about adjustments they had made with the slider where in past years, you know, especially when he gets ahead of two strikes, like that's a put away pitch. But he'd been in the past sort of bouncing it and it, it being a pitch that guys could sort of see. And, you know, it was really more of a waste pitch where it, last night, um, as we're here talking on Friday last night, that was, you know, uh, a pitch that looked, you know, a strike until the end and guys were just swinging over the top of that and looking helpless. Yeah. Yeah. It looked, uh, it, I mean, it, that's his, I don't know. He, he's, he's made, uh, I don't know how many starts for the Royals in a couple of years, but I, I, I don't remember him looking as impressive as he was last night. He's been good at times for sure. And he's definitely part of the, the plan going forward, but it was encouraging to see him throw as well as he did, and and the Royals needed that. They just needed a good, good effort from uh, fr- from Brad Keller. You know, they got great efforts up and down last night. But I, the one guy I want to call out is uh, is Nick Heath, uh, who made his first uh, his major league debut, not his debut, but his first major league start. Got his first big league hit. Uh, drove in a run, scored a run, um, and of course he ended the game with a. With a catch that uh, for the, the in which he crashed into the wall and in left center field, so really good night all around for Nick Heath. And I I saw you on the Zoom call last night with him. He was one excited guy, wasn't he after the game? Yeah, yeah. He's um, you know he's he's also a kid who I mean he wasn't um, wasn't born in Kansas, but grew up in Junction City. Went to Junction City High School, so he's not far from from where he grew up. Uh, still has family in the area. I think his sister actually lives in the Kansas City area now. Um, so this is, you know, um, a big deal for a lot of people surrounding him, including him. Um, but also a guy who was, I'm trying to remember which, I want to say it was 17th round that he was picked. I'd have to look again. But um, so this wasn't, you know, uh, a guy who everybody was, you know, pegging for the big leagues um, from the jump. This was, you know, a late bloomer who was going to go the community college route and then ended up going to a college uh, four-year school basically because the coach ended up there. And um, now here he is in the big leagues and speed has been his ticket, but um, they, they think he could be potentially more than that. And just by, again, opportunities sort of landed him probably a longer look right now because you've got, you know, um, uh, Bubba's on the uh, on the IL. Um, Franchi Cordero had a wrist thing that you know pulled him out of the lineup the other day, um, and the fact that you know Heath is here, the fact that they decided to keep him when they had to cut rosters down to twenty eight fr- from thirty means that they're going to try and give him a look and see what he can do, see if he's just going to be a speed guy or see if he's a guy who can can do more than just be the pinch runner who you need to steal a base. Right. Mom attended Kansas State, was a track athlete at K-State, and participated in the uh, 1988 Olympic trial. So um, uh, athlete, uh, uh, athletic gene in the, in the, runs in the, in the Heat family. So um, what do we know about Bubba on, on the IL? Have, have they, 
what, what's that about? Well, they, they have not announced an injury, which, I mean, we'd be speculating, but, I mean, I could say this. Um, typically this season, when they don't announce an injury, um, it usually leans you, – you you assume that they may have to do with the uh, the ongoing health crisis, let's put it that way. Right, um, yeah. Because uh, if a player contracts COVID – the team is not allowed to announce that unless they get permission from the player. So guys can go on the IL for COVID and there would be no injury listed if a guy went on the IL for COVID. And then they wouldn't necessarily announce that he went on the IL for that unless they got permission from the player to do so. Um, Which is why, you know, like the the Royals have announced uh, eight guys, I believe, so far this season. Um, But there's a couple other guys who've been on the IL with no injury. There's there's no announcement made. So um, you don't know for, I mean, yeah, there's an right. assumption there, but you don't you don't know. It's um, not official, right? You can't yeah, officially so say not, that they. That's yeah. why it's that's why it sits at eight. The the number of players that have tested positive. Yeah, that's uh, the, that's why we put. That's the whole reason why, if you see it written, usually it's written as announced because there's a couple other guys that you know we we probably suspect um, had it, but you know they never announced it, and um, without the team announcing it or the player confirming it, and then, and we're not you know we don't have open clubhouses where we could just go in and talk to guys on a regular basis. So you're not really going to confirm it unless they, they put them on a zoom call and some, some guys, you know, I mean, and there could be other guys that we don't really know. I mean, they're not the ultimate site. They could have guys that you don't see the sort of out of sight, out of mind thing where they could have had it. And you would never know because they were gone for a while, came back, but you were never talking to those guys or seeing those guys because that site's closed. So that's right. sort of the, the the way it is this year. Um, it's not just a Royals thing. That's that's happening around the league where you see guys that um, go on the IL. Sometimes you see the announcement. Sometimes the guys make announcements themselves. I believe that's what happened with the Cardinals, like, uh, like you know, Yadier Molina and a couple of guys announced it themselves, and then the team announced it. Um, so that's sort of the, the season of COVID. That's uh, sort of the, the way things are going with the IL, but you don't have uh, an actual confirmation on um, that. That obviously is talking in general, but specifically we don't have a confirmation on Bubba just that he went on the IL. No injury designation was given. And I did check just to make sure that there wasn't an injury that we just missed or anything like that, but no, no injury designation was given. Okay. Hey, I want to talk about a couple of other kind of offensive uh, topics here. One sp- specifically um, started the week on Sports BKC with Sam Mellinger and Vahe Gregorian, and we spent a lot of time talking about uh, Alberto Mondesi. And up until you know, then it was just a tough. It had been a tough start for for Mondi. He's had a good week, and I thought his hustle double on a ground ball to the second baseman that got through, and and Mondi ended up at, at second base was a was a big moment in the Thursday night game. It's good to see him have the, you know, kind of a week that he's had. He's got his numbers back up. He just looks, I don't know if, I don't know if more engaged is the right term because I don't want to suggest he was not engaged in the first couple weeks, but for whatever whatever reason, he just, he just seems like a different guy the last few days than, than the first couple weeks. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's he's just playing better. I mean, I I don't know if it's, um, uh, an engaged thing. I don't know if it's just still getting back into the swing of things because we, you know, it's easy to forget that he, um, you know, finished last season with a season-ending uh, surgery, and then, you know, didn't he didn't play in games in the first part of spring training. The first day he was in the lineup was the day the spring training got postponed and shut down. Then he went back to the Dominican where he was able to do some live stuff, but it sounds like there was, you know, it wasn't a, as structured a. Uh, a setting as you know you probably would have liked for to be off for three months and then he came back for the three week uh spring training 2.0 and then go get him so maybe it's just him getting back into the swing of things maybe it's um getting back up to speed um it's also i mean the struggles we were, we were seeing was you know in a normal season we would probably just say that's a small sample size but the season's just right. a lot shorter too um but i know you know like there were you know especially after the game in um Detroit, where he ended the or late in the game, he didn't end the game as the second to uh, second to last out, I believe, where there was the pop up that got dropped and he wasn't yeah. running all the way and he got caught in between first and second and then decided to try and get to second on the pop up that was dropped and just turned into a mess where he gets thrown out trying to get back to first. Um, there's a lot of, you know, uh, I think there's a lot of people 
feeling some type of way about the way he was going right then. And, you know, you saw the folks on Twitter talking about, uh, maybe it's time to bring up Bobby Wood Jr. who's played, you know, <laughs> less than 40 professional games at the rookie level. Um, but so that, I mean, I was, you know, I was sort of like pump the brakes on that. But, I mean, um, I think the other thing that people wondered about was like, okay, is Matheny going to, you know, sort of get into him? And, again, especially now with clubhouse is completely closed, we never really know. But I think Matheny's approach – my understanding was more of a encourage, um, especially when the guy is putting in the work. I mean, if a guy was not doing what he's supposed to be doing, I think Matheny might have got into him. Um, we, again, we wouldn't have necessarily known about it. But I think Matheny's approach with Mondesi, who, guy, who they thought was putting in all the work, was more encourage, but point out certain things that he's like, okay, this can't be part of your game. Like, we believe you can do this. We see you doing the work. We believe in you. Keep going. But this – that ain't it, son. That ain't going to be it. So I think that's more the approach that he took with Mondesi. And, you know, uh, between the encouragement and um, some time, it looks like it's starting to turn around. I mean, because, again, with the small sample size, I think he's up to the bat in like 270 now when, you know, it was 200. And people were like, ah, we got to get somebody else in here. So Yeah. And I, I think the other thing is when something like this happens at the, at the beginning of a season, to start a season, um, it, it just amplifies the – the criticism if you know if in a 162 game season and, and Montessi has his these two weeks in in July or August you, you notice it but it's not a it's not an alarm the way it's it was this time I think the same is true of the team you know you, you have a you know you lose 10 out of 14 in the middle of summer versus the beginning of the season and it just it's just not noticed in the same way but um, but but the Royals off to the slow start. Um, I'll, I'll submit this one without comment because we, we have talked about it before and it's it's not really getting a whole lot better. But um, through 14 games, Royals hitters have struck out 121 times. They've walked 24 times. That's a trend that really needs to change. Um, I look, I love the fact that they're that the Royals are a free swinging team and and their their championship teams of five years ago were all about putting the ball in play and making the defense work. But you got to take bases too when you can, and and um, and and the Royals need to get better in, in that department. So, okay, they start a start a three game series with the Minnesota Twins tonight, and you, Lynn, and everybody else that follows the Royals are going to get to know the Twins in a big way here in the next two and a half weeks, because this is the first of ten games against the Twins in the next uh, fourteen games for the Royals. They. They play Minnesota and the Cincinnati Reds uh, exclusively over the next 17 days. Um, it also means that there's a couple of off days for the Royals. The Royals are one of just three teams that have played 14 games so far this year. They're going to get a couple of off days next week. I think that'll um, uh, that'll be a very welcome situation for for the Royals. So, um, also look the the the. Um, uh, the Cubs are a good team. They had double-digit wins, most in the National League. The Twins go into tonight with the most wins in the American League. So part of this Royals record has to do with who they're playing. And, um, and, and uh, you know, that's, it's, it's not been an easy start on the schedule for, uh, for the Royals. But we'll see, see if they can get a bounce from, from last night's victory. And, um, and we're going to take a break here. When we come back, you're going to hear from Royals manager Mike Matheny and Nick Heath, who was uh, in a pretty jovial mood after the game on Thursday night. So, Lynn, appreciate you hanging out with us, and we will talk to you again next week. All right, sounds good. Hey, it's Blair. We have a special subscription offer for Sportsbeat KC listeners, unlimited digital access to the Kansas City Stars' award-winning sports coverage. Sign up now for one year of Sports Pass for access to all the sports news, features, and columns presented on the KansasCity.com site, and it's only $30. That's a 40% savings off our regular rate. Your subscription will automatically renew after the initial term at $50 unless you tell us to cancel. Your subscription helps support the sports coverage of KansasCity.com and the Kansas City Star, and that support has never been more important please visit KansasCity.com slash SportsBeatKC offer to get this special offer. And as always, thanks for listening. Hey, Skip, I'm not sure where to start here, but you just got to be pretty happy for your guys right now. Yeah, I think we uh, we start with Keller. 
planning, having him back at presence on the mound. Um, it, it's, we've talked about kind of getting some guys back, even through that at, um, summer camp. Every time we get someone back, it was like that called a shot in the arm. But you, you could feel that today. See Brad back out there and then Brad be Brad and uh, did a great job. And then the offense just did what they did. And that's uh, – you know, something we've been we've been waiting to see again. We, we know it's in there. I think it's great for the offense. Every single guy contributed, so a great approach. Um, but also for our pitching staff, you know, just keep coming because our guys are going to get the, the offense right. You see days like that, um, just a, a huge change in, and I believe, in the momentum of our club. I want to get to the third inning, too. Uh, you, know, you were already up three to nothing at that point, but Mondi's hustle double – uh, what kind of bolt of energy did that send throughout the dugout? You know, I, I, you hit it right on the head, Flanny, in my mind. Um, I thought that was kind of that that spark. Uh, him, he comes out of the box like he did. And we were talking about it in the, uh, in the middle of the game in the dugout, too, about, you know, that's what he started you know, by, by showing that kind of grit. But I just... I just liked how that that, um, that fight kind of can continue through every at bat. We saw that a lot of guys get to two strikes and stay with a good approach and fouling off pitches and all the things that we've been talking about that we wanted to see, we, we saw today. And then, you know, you keep staying with that. And next thing you know, you get a couple guys on base and, you know, you the long ball with Franco and with Witt. And then you know, Soler hits a monster shot. I mean, Gordo off the wall. Just everybody kind of taking advantage of when we got into those good counts, but they, they did a lot of fighting uh, in the meanwhile when they did get down. Hey, Skip. Hey, Mike. In the middle of that six-run inning, I mean, we've talked a lot about uh, some of the frustration. I'm wondering, are you, a lot, are you able to, in that middle of that, allow yourself to sort of exhale a little bit, or are you still sort of going through, okay, who, who we got, who we got to get lined up, or are you able to sort of take a minute in the middle of that? Yeah, I, I excelled when uh, you guys told me to take my mask off. But, um, you know, I just uh, – too much respect for the game to understand that things can happen in a hurry. And um, But just so happy for our guys. You know, we, we keep talking about uh, the process that they're buying into, the things that they're working on. Um, we, we need those kind of innings, those kind of days to, to give yourself a little bit of room. And then, you know, to be able to pitch some other guys, then watch a Kyle Zimmer come in and do exactly what he did on the heels of Brad, just having a fantastic outing. I mean, just all those positives built on top of the, the kind of offense. It's really good defense as well. Um, just one of those overall good efforts. But you could feel that, that these guys were, were, were buying into some of the things that we were seeing uh, despite not having the results that we were looking for, you got to have the results, and today was one of those really good. What are you going to do with the baseball from your first big league hit? Send it home to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I know my mom's probably at home waiting for me to call her, so um, I definitely go ahead and send that to the house. And let them do whatever they please with it. I'll be putting it up somewhere, but we got a lot of dogs running around the house, so one of them might get to it before it's all said and done. Uh, is that your first introduction into the center field wall here? Uh, yeah, it is. I thought the chain link fence is going to be a little bit softer, but I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> you okay, though? Yeah, we're golden. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Maybe my adrenaline's still running a little bit, but we'll be fine. Can you take us through the emotions of that first big league hit? Um, right off the bat, I was hoping it was a little lower than it was, and then uh, we saw Hayward charging a little bit, and the only thing that was going through my head was like, can you trip? Can you lose it? <laughs> Something like let it fall. And they ended up falling, and uh, I almost had a moment of just, like, wanting to celebrate right there. But, you know, I kind of told myself they got to keep it locked in, ended up getting the second bit, and then that's kind of when it all hit me, you know, that uh, that was my first hit. So I kind of had to celebrate a little bit, and then it was get back to business until uh, the game was over with. So I'll do my celebrating later on. Hey, Nick, I'm in uh, Topeka, so I'm about an hour from Junction City. I actually caught up with your mom today <laughs> talking about what this moment means for her. So what does it mean for you to be able to share that? with your mom uh this is a blessing first and foremost i gotta thank god and and for for getting me here for keeping me healthy for for giving me the opportunity to come out here and do this uh day in skip uh, this whole organization for supporting me and giving me the opportunity to come out here and play the game that i love um as for my mom and my parents and my family the sacrifice that they made the time that they gave up just for me to continue to play uh it's, it's so many different things so um, I know 
calling her later on is going to be kind of a surreal moment. It'll kind of hit me. I'm sure it'll be kind of emotional, but um, all the hard work we put in, all the blood, sweat, and tears, stuff like that, you hear this as the real so um my mom deserves <laughs> way more credit than i could ever give her verbally for uh, everything she's done for me and everything she's uh, done to support me Mark. hey nick, hey, nick. The, you, you mentioned the, the um you mentioned the, the first hit did you think you had the hit earlier when that play that was down the line i'm gonna be honest with you i kind of didn't want it because i wanted my first one to be a laser you know what i mean everybody wants their first hit to be a hard hit so uh when i saw it go foul Right, when they said it went foul, I don't know. I was kind of mixed emotions. I was hoping that, you know, I was like, dang, well, now nah, I really got to get one. But part of me was like, you know what? You can, you can hit a ball so much better than that. And it ended up working out for me. So, uh, man, I'm just, I'm, I'm thankful. That's the only word I can give you to describe how I'm feeling right now is thankful. And how, how would you describe sort of this whole day? I mean, like, you'd already been in games. You already had, you know, a stolen base. But your first start and your first hit on the same day. Uh, coming to the park, I was pretty nervous. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I kind of had a whole lot of different things going through my head and just saw the, saw the lineup and out there with Gordo, out there with Wade, and we, you know, we kind of had our guys going. So, um, I was kind of nervous. I wanted to hold up my hand. I wanted to, you know, show the guys what I was capable of doing. Um, and then once the game started, you know, the nerves kind of went away. Uh, and then I kind of, you know, let my instinct take over all the practice and stuff we put in, all the work we put in kind of took over from there. So. Uh, at the beginning of the game, there was a lot of nerves. I was a little shaky, uh, but then once things uh, once things got rolling, and you know, I saw the offense kind of take off, I really wanted to be a part of what they were doing tonight, and uh, uh, they were great in the dugout, on the field, everywhere. So uh, tonight was huge for the team. Did your phone blowing up? <laughs> uh, yeah, it won't stop vibrating. So <laughs> I got a, I came back to quite a few notifications. I'm gonna do everything I can to get back to those people. Um, I know they understand it, and uh, I got a lot of people from back home in Junction City. It's only two hours from here. Um, got a lot of people from back home celebrating. A lot of people were trying to call me and get a hold of me, but uh, I'll say my thank yous, and you know, I kind of let everybody know how the experience was little by little. Nick, after you made that last catch, you're on the ground. Were you kind of relishing the moment, or were you in pain when you were on the ground? I think it kind of shocked me that I hit the wall and then uh, my shoulder started hurting a little bit. And I was like, nah, I'm not going to stay down here very long. Uh, Gordo asked me if I was okay. And some of those things you kind of just got to run off so you don't think about it too much. So uh, I tried to get up as quick as I could and keep it moving. And we'll worry about the rest of that stuff later on. I'm kind of riding a little high right now. You'll get a little ice before the night. <laughs> For sure. I'll ice at the house too. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Nikki. That'll do it for today and this week on Sports BKC. Thanks to our production staff of Derek Donovan, Randy Mason, Beth Welsh, Jeff Rosen, Savannah Smith, and Chris Fickett. Tip of the cap to Lynn Worthy, who talked Royals with us today. Links to Royals stories can be found in the show notes and on KansasCity.com. Hey, earlier in the episode, you heard me talk about the Sports Pass offer. It still stands. It's still a good one. 30 bucks for a year's worth of sports coverage. And that includes the Sports Extra that comes with the E-Edition. There's more than 40 additional pages of national sports coverage today. Here's an even better offer. Buy the entire Kansas City Star product. Sports, news, features, commentary, and analysis, the whole thing. You get all the stories written by my talented colleagues, plus additional news, sports, and business coverage. The details can be found at account.kansascity.com slash subscribe. That's account.kansascity.com slash subscribe. And whether it's the Sports Pass or the full subscription, you're getting and supporting the best sports and news coverage in Kansas City and helping us produce programs like Sports BKC. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back Monday with a new episode.